Now check this out. This is a brush that I can literally paint with and it kind of looks like the fuzzies of the edge of the sweater, right? This is a before and there's the after. You can see we have much more realistic hair in general. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and I'm so excited about this tutorial because Photoshop has some really great new features that allow for automatic cutouts of your subjects. Now, they're not perfect. They do require a little bit of finesse, but I think they're gonna greatly speed up your workflow. Let's go ahead and get into Photoshop and show you these awesome new tools and my preferred method for combining manual and automatic cutouts. So my goal here is to cut out our subject from the background. Now, the fastest way to do this for your very first step is gonna to go to select and then down here to select subject. Okay, this is a relatively new tool in Photoshop that honestly does a very good job finding your subject and even refining areas like their hair selection. So I always recommend starting with select subject. Let's go ahead and click on our layer mask icon right down here. So let's click on our layer mask and you're gonna see basically it allows us to cut our subject out from the background. And you may be asking yourself, uh, aren't we done? <laughs> what else is there to do? Well, let's go ahead and just make a white background right underneath our subject. There we go, we'll pull this under and take a look at the layer mask. So we're gonna zoom into a couple of areas here, namely the sweater right over here. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask. And you're gonna see that basically the layer mask looks great, but we do have some areas where it got a little bit confused, like here with the sweater, uh, that should be all, all visible, right? It's, you can see through the sweater in some of those areas. Also, we have some areas of the hair that didn't necessarily get captured perfectly. If I hold shift and click on the layer mask, you can see some of the hair didn't really get captured. And then the other thing that we have is a, the fuzziness of the sweater, okay? This is something that Honestly, and, and I'm just being as honest as possible, fuzziness of a sweater like this, actu accurately capturing and cutting this out is extremely difficult, even with manual processes, to the point where I wouldn't even recommend trying to do it. I'm gonna show you a much better way in just a second. But this is an issue that we have to solve, right? Because as we can see, uh, the edge just kind of looks a little bit jaggedy. But all in all, I gotta say it's pretty good. Now, let's compare that to a more manual version of the cutout. I'm just gonna do this super quick. So basically, let's just go ahead and duplicate this layer. I'm gonna just click and drag this down to the trash can here. And I'm gonna show you what I would normally do for a more manual version of this cutout. I probably use the pen tool. So P for the pen tool. And basically at this point, and I'm gonna do a very, very quick version of it. Basically, you just start tracing around your subject and there we go, and in a few minutes you'd be done. But I'm just gonna do part of my subject for now. Let's just right click and I'm gonna make this into a selection. There we go, and then click on our layer mask. The reason why I'm showing you what I would normally do with a manual selection is that the pen tool is great when you have a hard edge. Let's say you were trying to cut out like a phone or a car, something that has a very hard edge, there's really no beating the pen tool. But when you have a soft edge, like a sweater, the pen tool is actually not that great of a job because my edge doesn't look soft anymore, right? Like I tried to do a pretty good job with the pen tool, but this is clearly not the tool for the job. And in fact, my results from the more automatic method actually look a little more organic and a little bit better. So in this case, the answer is not to use the pen tool. The answer is to simply refine the automatic selection that we got from our select subject. So just because we're using these automatic tools doesn't mean we can't add a little bit of firepower and do some awesome stuff on top of it. So what we're gonna do now is actually go in and add that fur to the sweater. It's gonna be super cool. So it's actually really easy to do. We wanna zoom right in. I'm gonna hold shift and click on this layer mask. There we go. Now on a new layer, we're just gonna create a new little brush stroke. So I'm gonna hit D for my default colors and there we go. I'm just gonna do uh, basically just with my brush tool at 100% opacity, I just wanna do something like this, right? Something that kind of looks like, there we go, looks like a little bit of that hair and maybe I'll do one like this and one like that. There we go. So I'm trying to basically imitate the little hair, the fuzzies, there we go, of the sweater. Pretty cool. Now. Underneath here, I'm creating a custom brush, by the way. This is what I'm getting to. Underneath this layer, let's go ahead and just create a new layer underneath it. I'm just gonna make a white little selection here, right here. You can see I'm, the little area here kind of looks like a fur ball. 
Okay, on a layer underneath this black where I just painted with the brush tool, I'm gonna hit Shift Delete and we're gonna fill this with white. There we go. So we now have, uh, <laughs> very, very nice, let's go ahead and center that. Uh, we now have a black little fuzzball on a white background. And I can actually define this as a custom brush. So we're gonna go to edit and then down here to define brush preset. Okay, and I'm just gonna call this sweater hairball. <laughs> Fantastic. And you're gonna be able to actually download this brush as well if you wanna play around with it. Okay, so my sweater hairball you can see. Let's just go ahead and make, I'm gonna deselect and we're gonna make these layers invisible. I'm gonna create a new layer. And now with my sweater hairball, you're gonna see I'm gonna start painting around with this sweater hairball, but it doesn't look like I want it just yet. So let's go to window and then down to our brush settings. And then I'm gonna turn on shape dynamics. So we're just gonna crank up our size jitters. Some of these are gonna be big and some of these are gonna be small. Our angle jitter is gonna go up and you can see, look at your little preview here, it's starting to look more like a hairball, right? And as I paint there, it's like, oh, that kind of looks like a little hairball because I'm rotating it. The angle is jittering. I'm gonna go with a little bit of roundness jitter as well. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and scatter this just a little bit as well. So basically this is what we're gonna be painting now. Uh, I'm gonna go down here to transfer and I'm just gonna go to, uh, there we go, our opacity jitter. Let's turn a little bit of opacity jitter. So some of this is more visible than others. Okay. Now check this out. This is a brush that I can literally paint with and it kind of looks like the fuzzies of the edge of the sweater, right? Like maybe not perfect, but pretty good, I gotta say. So now that we have this really cool brush that looks like fuzziness of a sweater, we can actually go in and adjust my original layer mask that select subject made for me. So this is a really great method of the manual and the automatic tools coming together. So let's go ahead, these layers, we don't really need them anymore. I'm just gonna group them and we'll just make that invisible, okay? By the way, you guys are gonna be able to download this brush, okay? So when you download this package on flurn.com, just follow the link down below, you'll get this PSD and you'll get this brush, which is super cool because you can use it on whatever you want. Now, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask, and then I just wanna paint white on my layer mask like this. Check this out. And basically what I'm doing is painting fuzzies. Now I can make my brush larger if I wanna get like a couple big ones in there, you know, for like randomness and things like that, or I can make my brush smaller. I'm just using open and close brackets on my keyboard to do so, okay? And as you can see, this is something that really is a lot better than anything you could get out of like a pen tool or something like that. Because again, the, uh, the actual object that I need to cut out from my background doesn't have a hard edge. It really is just like a fuzzy soft edge sweater. So let's hold Alt or Option and take a quick look at our layer now, okay? And we can see like, uh, this looks really good. Let's make our brush a little bit smaller. And now we can see like, it looks like we went ahead and cut out all of the individual fuzzes and things like that from our sweater, when in fact we did not. All of this stuff, all of this detail is perfectly generated from the brush. All right, so we're just gonna go around here and basically continue to just paint white on my layer mask and bring together the fuzziness of this sweater. I love doing this sort of thing. I just think it's so much fun because it's it really kind of solves the problem of like, hey, how do you cut out a fuzzy sweater in Photoshop? Because honestly, it's really very difficult to do to capture the actual fuzzies to the point where I don't even recommend it. Like, you know, don't try to catch the original fuzzies that were there. Just go in here and add your own fuzzies after. You're gonna get a much better result. Not only that, but you'll be able to use this in a lot more uh, different situations as well because now your layer mask is as close to perfect as it's gonna get. So let's hold Alt or Option here and take a look at that fuzziness at the edge of the sweater. And if you don't like it, like if you painted too much, you can just paint with black and then paint away some of the fuzzies too. So you can go either way with it. All right, we're just gonna speed this up as I do the rest of the sweater. And I'll do the rest of the sweater. Now at this point, we're done with the sweater. Let's take a look at our layer mask. I'm gonna hold shift and click on our layer mask to show you the before and after, and then alt or option to click on the layer mask so we can actually see it. 
And I gotta say, it looks like a really well-defined sweater layer mask. Really happy with it. Now, there are a couple of areas that I wanna fix here, uh, just like around my subject's face. So I'm just gonna grab a regular brush. There we go, just a standard brush. And we're just gonna paint white with our brush tool right over here, just on the face. There we go, just a little bit of cleanup there. And then the last little area I wanna clean up is the hair, cause it really did, it did a pretty good job, honestly, with the hair, but we could do a little bit better. So I'm gonna hold shift and click on the layer mask. Now I want a way to select this hair and I want a very like accurate selection. So I'm gonna use a tool called channels and it's really good when you have uh, big differences between light and dark. And here we do, our background is light and the hair is relatively dark. So I can make a nice selection from that. So let's go to window and down here to channels. There we go. Okay, and here in our channels, we can click on uh, RGB and then you can click on your red, green and blue channels. And what I'm looking for is the most amount of contrast. So you can see between the hair in the background, between red, green and blue, blue is actually giving me the most contrast. So let's go ahead and duplicate our blue channel by clicking and dragging it to the new channel icon. You'll see blue copy. It's super important to copy your channel or else uh, if you match with your original channel, you can actually change colors in your image. So always make a copy. Now let's hit control or command L for our levels and I'm gonna make my darks a little bit darker, okay? I'm enhancing this contrast a little bit more and I'm gonna make my lights a little bit lighter. And what we're gonna see is now we have a little bit more of our hair visible uh, on a light colored background. So that looks pretty good. So now that we have more of this contrast going on between the hair and the background, it allows for an easier selection. So now what we need to do is select this channel. You can do so just by holding control or command and clicking right here on the thumbnail, or you can go to this little selection icon right down here. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now this always selects the light parts of your image, okay? In this case, it's gonna be the background and things like that. So I want to inverse my selection, right? Because I want the hair selected. So let's go to select and then down here to inverse. There we go. Now the hair is selected, the dark parts. So back here on our layers, I'm gonna to go to my layer mask and then check this out. I can just paint white on my layer mask. I'm gonna hit Control or Command H to hide my selection boundaries. The selection is still active, it's just temporarily hidden. And look at this, I'm able to just basically uh, paint my hair back visible again. Okay, all of this detail that we're able to get. Here, let's just show you, I'll just do a before and after by duplicating the layer. Okay, so here we go. My selection is still active. I'm basically, because I had that selection with my hair, I'm basically able to paint it back visible again and I'm getting all of this original detail of my hair. Because again, my selection is based on light and dark information in my image. There we go. And let's see, we were able to get a little bit of our hair back there. And we're able to get a much more realistic set uh, looking hair. There we go. So let's just show you the two. So this is uh, with our channels that we painted in, and this is the other version. You can see the hair just doesn't look that realistic. It's kind of choppy around the edges and things like that, okay? Not perfect, but here we go. This is a before, and there's the after. You can see we have much more realistic hair, still perfectly cut out on the background. You can see all these fine little details in the hair, really, really nice details, and it's a great way to cut out hair in general. Now, I'd always recommend holding Alt or Option, taking a look at your layer mask, and then just paint black on the layer mask, like anywhere where you don't necessarily need uh, any of that detail. Sometimes like over here, it made a little bit too much of my background visible. That'll just happen sometimes. So you just wanna go ahead and get in your layer mask and then paint black. But look at this beautiful selection of the hair. I mean, that's really, really nice and very difficult to get that much hair selection. So now what we have as a whole, like look at our layer mask. I mean, all the beautiful fuzz around our uh, little sweater here. We have really nice detail here in the hair. Again, could use a little bit of refinement. Sometimes what I like to do is hit my brush tool and then change my mode of my brush from normal down here to overlay and then paint black right here on overlay. And that'll just kind of get rid of some of these lighter colored wisps while keeping the more defined detail in there. Just make sure to change that back uh, from overlay, uh, change it back to normal when you're done. There we go, normal. All right, and there we have it. So 
What's the verdict between manual versus automatic cutouts? Well, I think we win when we can combine them both. Go ahead and start off with an automatic cutout. That's gonna get you a lot of way there with very little effort. And then you can go ahead and add a little bit of finesse, you work on your edges a little bit with more manual techniques like we showed you with the channels and the custom brush, you're gonna get a professional looking result in a fraction of the time. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell. We'll send you a free tutorial every single week. Thanks again. I'll flirn you later. Bye everyone.